In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Um, today, as you know, is the second day of the Feast of the Theophany, many happy returns. And uh, our Lord says something very interesting in today's Gospel reading. It's uh, from the Gospel according to our teacher, St. Luke, from chapter 11. In verse 34, he says, the lamp of the body is the eye. <clears throat> Therefore, this is very interesting, when your eye is good, your whole body is also full of light. But when your eye bad, is bad, your whole body is also full of darkness. It's interesting how the whole body is affected by the eye. We often talk about how what makes or breaks a life, it's not the events that happen to us. It's how we choose to respond to the events that happen to us. You can have two homes, um, two scenarios, where one home is, is a horrible place to live, complete dysfunction, lots of abuse, and, and just terrible. I don't want to go into details. And you can have two siblings grown in that home. One of them can grow up to be a saint, and one of them can grow up to be a, a criminal or, or whatever. And you can have a home that is a little church, a home that is heaven on earth, full of love, full of good communication, full of all kinds of things that we always try to teach to or to try to practice. And you can have two siblings grown in that same home. One can grow up to be a saint and one can grow up to be a, a criminal. So it's not the events that happen to us, it's how we choose to respond to the event that happened to us. Did you realize that whether or not you have a miserable life or a very happy, joyful life is in your hands? Regardless of not whether you are a victim to something or not. I would love to be full of light. And I think that it would be safe to assume that all of you also would love to be full of light. So this raises a logical question, it's okay. How does one develop that good eye? How do I get that good eye so that my body can be full of light? Not just uh, literal, of course, that, that your whole body actually literally healthier and happier and joyful. Your whole life is a lot more um, joyful, um, enjoyable. Well, the first uh, thing that we need to do um, to make the decision in our eyes is, is that we need to decide that people are innocent until proven guilty. We need to be willing to trust people. Be open to believing what people say, at least until they prove otherwise. Have you noticed that overall people are becoming more and more suspicious, more and more cynical? The initial response is to not believe anything they hear. Why am I saying this? Because look at the narration of what our Lord Jesus Christ said in today's gospel about that good eye. In Luke 11, 29, he said, it says, while the crowds were thickly gathered together, he began to say, this is an evil generation. Allah, yani you think he would say something good, that he likes this. This is an evil generation. It seeks a sign and no sign will be given to it except the son of Jonah the prophet. Lord, why? Well, why say this? I mean, it's good to have a, a large crowd thickly gathered around you. He says, only if they have a good eye. Only if they gather around me because they believe me and they want to hear more and to keep my commandments. They gather around me because they don't believe me. They want to see more signs. They're holding believing um, hostage until they see, until something happens. And as we've known from history, many times people see many signs and wonders and nothing changes. It's not dependent on the events that happen, it's dependent on how you choose to respond. Somebody can not see a miracle but choose to believe, and somebody can see a miracle chooses not to believe still. So it's all in my, in my hands, in my control. And, um, sorry, I'm glitching here. The greatest commandment that God gave us is to love God and love neighbor. Okay, well, as we know from 1 Corinthians, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this first verse here, um, because this proves that he, this is, he wants people to believe him. Uh, in the beginning of the gospel, says the, uh, a woman 
after he spoke these things, a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed are the womb that bore you and the breast which nursed you. But he said, What well, more than that? Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Blessed are those who choose to believe. The, the thing I was going back to the point I was saying that the greatest commandment is for us to love God and to love neighbor. And then as we read in 1 Corinthians 13, it says that what? Love believes all things. Chooses to believe all things. Does not mean for the person to be gullible, just to be willing to trust. Just to be willing to take things face value at least until the person proves otherwise. That you shouldn't trust them. In order to develop that, to develop that good eye, um, I need to take things face value. Unfortunately, TV, especially like this thing called reality TV, uh, <laughs> I don't know what reality they're talking about. Um, based on, like, I catch little pieces here and there when I'm traveling or something, and it's, it's really messed up. Um, it teaches the person not to trust anybody and social media and all that stuff. All this stuff causes the people to be less and less trusting and kind of live in like this undercurrent of fear, uneasy. The body becomes dark. Life becomes darker. So the first thing to develop that good eye, I need to be willing to trust people with discernment, but at least Consider people innocent until proven guilty to you, not because of what you heard about them. The second thing to develop a good eye is to train yourself to see God, to find God. Genesis 1, 26, 27 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. What does this tell you? Tells you that there is a piece of God in every human being. No matter what choices they make, no matter how much you don't like them, no matter how much they've hurt you, there's a piece of God in every human being. Shatir, the wise one, the crafty one, is the one who trains themselves to see that good piece and to try their best to focus on that piece. The second thing is that in Psalm 139, we use this psalm a lot, we refer to it a lot. In verse 7 and 9 it says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take up the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. God is everywhere. What does this tell you? God is in every situation. No matter how horrible that situation is, no matter how unfathomable that situation is, train yourself to remember how God is in control. Nothing would have happened with, without God allowing it. God, God's hand is present, at least, everywhere. Train yourself to see where is God in this situation? What is God doing here? What is God working up to? This is a way to have a good eye. And it will completely transform how you respond to events in your life. Not just in the bad situations, but train yourself to see God in every situation. To remember that God is still in charge. So in general, train yourself to see God. Train yourself to search and find God in every human being and in every situation. The third thing to do to have a good eye is to seek to make excuses for people. When somebody makes a mistake, not if, the sometimes we behave as if like we expect it to never happen. When somebody makes a mistake, tell yourself something like, maybe they didn't notice. Maybe they weren't paying attention. Maybe they have a big problem on their mind that's distracting them. When somebody offends you, even if it really hurts, tell yourself something like, maybe they had a bad morning. Maybe they just heard bad news. Maybe they have a headache. Maybe they don't feel well. Maybe they didn't mean it. Remind yourself of this very simple but very profound fact. I don't know what I don't know. We believe that intellectually, but then we tend to 
determined that I know a lot of stuff that I know that I don't know. I hope this makes sense. We were talking about this at the St. Paul meeting uh, last Sunday. Um, we were talking about this scenario that I think drives at home, uh, no pun intended. But imagine that you're driving and somebody comes with a really fast car and, and just almost clips you, but then they pass you and they go run. After your initial moment of freaking out, nothing happened, thank God. They just moved on. Now the rest is in your hand. You can choose to be like, oh, this guy's ridiculous, they're so selfish, they're so inconsiderate, they own the road, they're like, what is this? They can't, I can't believe people, and like, now the guy's gone. Or the driver, guy or girl. Um, but now what is the state of your heart? Blood pressure is higher, adrenaline is higher, you're gonna become a, a worse driver because you're not gonna let anybody pass you. Um, when you get to your destination, you're gonna go in there a little bit irritable. When people approach you, like you may respond not in the best way. Because of how you chose to know what you don't know. Now the other option is you can respond and say, oh my goodness. And then you can start thinking, maybe they have an emergency. Maybe they told them a loved one is hurt or is in the hospital. Maybe they're very late for something very, very important. Any of you did that? I, I'll speak for myself. A lot of times I drive like this maniac, and then as I'm doing something that I know I shouldn't do, I'm, I'm speaking as if the other driver's going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just really late. This is very important. But they, don't, they can't hear me. Now, what is your state when you interpret it this way? Maybe you might pray for this person. You might say, oh, God, you know, protect them, God, whatever. Get them to their destination. At the very least, the state of your heart is completely different. It all depends on how you choose to respond. So again, our goal here is to develop that good eye so that our whole body, our whole mind, our whole demeanor, our whole life is full of light. It really depends on having that good eye. And it's not easy, but it's something that at least we can be aware of and to train ourselves to have a good eye. First of all, be willing to trust people with wisdom, with discernment, but be willing to trust people until they prove you wrong and to give people chances. The second thing, train yourself to find God in every person and in every situation because He is in every person and in every situation. <coughs> to believe that there is a peace of God in every person no matter what, how they choose to live. In uh, Proverbs, uh, I don't remember where it says, the heart of a man is a deep well, but a man of understanding brings it out. So do you believe that God is in that person? Okay, now let's work on bringing that out to remove whatever layers of dirt or something to bring out that diamond that's shining. The third thing is seek to make excuses for people. Remember how many times you have made mistakes and you have offended people or messed up for various reasons that cause you to do those things and allow yourself to think, you know, various things or excuses for yourself. So perhaps, perhaps it is possible that the same causes cause this other person to mess up. God willing, next time we will talk about uh, a few other things to help us train to have a good eye. So for now, please be Make this your homework, to focus on not just to pray for it, but to try to have that good eye. May God help us all to have a good eye so that our whole life be full of light. And glory be to our God forever and ever. Amen.